Hello, everybody. It's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Thank you for joining me here on YouTube. Be sure to check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com for everything Royal Caribbean related. Happy Monday, everybody. Every Monday, we are live right here on YouTube, hanging out with all of you guys, talking about the most important thing in the whole wide world, which, of course, is uh, going on a Royal Caribbean cruise. So thank you for joining me here today to discuss this. And welcome, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Another Monday, another opportunity to talk some Royal Caribbean. I see Kelly Hardy is here from MEI Travel. Becky Menken from MEI Travel also here. Hello. Uh, Susan from North Carolina. Getting choked up thinking of Susan. Sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, Dennis Orman from Northern Nevada. Ed Spies, hello. Michelle B., what's going on? Mark the Shark, hello. We got Denise and Wendy and Nathan. Don Goldstein is here as well. Brogan, hello. And we got Mark uh, in Miami. Guys, welcome all. Thank you for joining me here on YouTube Live. As I mentioned, every Monday we're here to talk Royal Caribbean, and I'm here to talk about what's on your mind about Royal Caribbean cruises because there's plenty going on in the world of cruising, even though nothing, there are no ships really sailing. There are some, but still, a lot happening out there. So we're going to hit it as much as we can over here. And we're starting off today's live chat with an awesome super chat from Ed Spies. Ed, thank you so much, buddy. Appreciate that. Beth Dickerson from MEI Travel is here. Uh, wow, Beth, you know, I, w I heard uh, somebody singing your praises uh, over the weekend. Um, I'll, I'll get to that in a second because we have another super chat coming in. Michael Bush, my goodness. So many great super chats here. Grace is here. Hello, Grace. Welcome, Christina Del Rossi is here. The gang's all here, Christina. Absolutely. Janice from Virginia Beach. Hello. Michael Bush from Savannah. What's going on? So quick story, and it's appropriate I'm telling this story because James Gatton is here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, James uh, actually uh, gifted me over the weekend this lovely Royal Caribbean blog lamp. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it looks nice. Thank you, James. And I want to share a quick story because you guys know... I'm always telling everybody, you should. everyone should use a good travel agent. The importance of using a good travel agent, right? And I've said this time and time and time again, and many of you get it. And there may there were still some people who are unsure. Perhaps that's still a good um, you know, path for them. And I want to share what happened with James here because James is not on a cruise, unfortunately. So he went with his backup. He took his lovely wife on a trip down to Florida to enjoy some times in the uh, theme parks out here. And uh, James booked his trip with MEI Travel, and when he got to the resort, there was a problem with the reservation. There was an issue with the ticketing, and you know what James did? He didn't freak out. He didn't lose his mind. He called his MEI Travel agent, and he told, you know, this is how he told me. He's like, listen, I, I assume that she'd be busy, she'd be working. Immediately called right back, te texted back actually, and said, hey, don't worry. We're gonna get to the bottom of this, buddy. It's great having a good travel agent, and it really makes a big difference when you have a good one. Now, obviously, this is not about cruises in this scenario, but that exact um, that exact setup, those act th when things go wrong and no uh, with no fault of your own, it is so invaluable to have a great travel agent in your in your back pocket, and I love that. Javon is here. Jennifer Jennifer Kelm is here. Welcome, Jennifer. Uh, Ronan, sorry I couldn't make last week's live stream. Checking in from Denver. Welcome, Ronan. Good to see you, buddy. Welcome back. Um, Charles, so our March 2021 cruise has been canceled. Why no refunds, only credits? Uh, no, they can give you a refund, sir. If Charles, now I think this is what happened. If you were still booked and Royal Caribbean canceled on you, you have the option of a refund. But Charles, did you cancel before Royal did? If so, then yes, you agreed to that ahead of time. But if you had held on, and that's something I would have probably recommended in here to just wait for Royal Caribbean to cancel on you, then you would have the choice of the refund, if that's the case. Now, if you if Royal Caribbean canceled on you and you were still booked, you do have the option for a refund. Um, so I'm not sure, again, where the issue is there. Uh, Terry Gallant, are specialty dining restaurants still all you can eat? I never use them. But if I was going to pay, I would want to get my money's worth. Absolutely, yes. The only restaurant that I'm aware of that has a limit is Chops in terms of one entree. Terry, trust me, dude. You're not going hungry in those restaurants. You can have as many sides and appetizers and desserts as you want. I've never tried ordering more than one entree. I mean, I can't even finish one entree anymore. I'm getting old. Let's 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 face it. But, yeah. Um, you know, but, yes, they're, 
essentially they're all you can eat again chops is the only one i'm aware of that has a limit on that so hey chloe is here staying up late with us i really appreciate all of our uk friends our irish friends all our european friends i'm just gonna say this all to europe because we've got great friends like chloe and brogan and a number of other good friends who stay up late with us and and hang out i appreciate that thank you guys for joining us here uh, Axel, what's going on? Spencer, hope Royal Herman gets the ships moving soon. I agree 100%. Hello, K Palmer. Welcome. Schmeel wants to know, is it true you have to be vaccinated to cruise? No, um, Royal Herman has not made any kind of announcement to that effect. Could that be a possibility? Sure, maybe, but nothing has been announced. Nothing has been confirmed. That's not a rule right now anyway. Uh, Jay Blackmore wants to know or says, would staying at a Royal Suite be good for my family with two teens? What would be the Royal Genie do? Hope you're well. I mean... You're never really going to say, boy, this is a mistake to go to the suite and have a Royal Genie. I mean, that's amazing. It's just going to be super expensive. I mean, staying in a suite is a splurge. Same way as like you go, you book an airplane ticket. You can sit in economy. You can sit in first class. You know, just sitting in first class, you know, you know, will get you certain benefits? Absolutely. But, you know, you can still have a great flight in economy. It's just and save a lot of money along the way. It's a splurge. So I don't know that one is right or wrong or it's a bad idea. Um, but the Genie really is your combination butler concierge and wish maker they do a really nice job and they will make sure your trip is as special as possible but you're definitely paying for it no question about that but they're amazing people so all right there we go uh tony t has can we buy mei stock i don't know becky can we buy stock robert moss why can't you transfer the drink and dining package to another cruise even though it's the same ship just months later good question robert so the reason you can't transfer purchases from one cruise or one sailing to another is because the prices for those items vary from ship to ship and sailing to sailing. So it's not a flat fee. It's not like you buy the drink package, you pay the same price. It differs, and that's the reason why. So um, now, granted, you could do this, Robert, by the way. was It, yeah, it was Robert. Um, you know, if you cancel and then immediately book again, you know, right after that, I mean, you're going to – it's going to be on the same – billing cycle it's going to be you're going to see a credit and you're going to see a, a charge so same difference quite frankly but in terms of prices now the price of those things like drink packages wi-fi shore excursions etc those are all different they're all based on the sailing itself and it varies so uh ratatat matt great name welcome rich o from mei travel is here welcome billy says matt my wife and i have free cruises from royal Caribbean casino actually too Four-day cruises back-to-back. Can you still take back-to-back -back cruises? Yes, there's absolutely no rule that Royal Caribbean or the CDC has said preventing back-to-back -back cruises. Uh, Ahmed, what's up, dude? Long time. Please tell me that we cruise coming back in 21. I certainly hope so, my friend. Sooner than later. So uh, just water in the cup, not to worry. Brogan, how much notice do they normally give when announcing cancellations? There's no rhyme or reason, Brogan. Um, there's no, like, you know be at this many like there's no drop dead date they could do it 24 hours before your cruise quite frankly so there is no pattern to it if that's what you're asking i know a lot of people want to know that so uh pat jeffrey hello welcome um ronan says what are some things i can miss on a ship ronan what do you mean by that i'm not sure i understand your question like are you th like things that aren't worth doing or jason how soon in advance can you book the seating in the entertainment venues good question you know, there isn't a set time. It used to be like really easy to 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 plan. Let me fix my camera. I think I got a little too much headroom there. Um, it used to be a little bit easier to uh, to to plan those things out and to they used to come out like around like you know even as far as ninety days. But the reality is, Jason, the date, the time frame in which your reservations become available to book has is just all over the place. Some sailings. You get it maybe 45 to 60 days before your cruise. And others may take, you know, maybe closer to a month before, quite frankly. So, hey, Nick from Singapore is here. Quantum canceled all sailings to Alaska. I'm cruising in two days. Can't wait. For you, Nick lives in Singapore, by the way. And I am, I've never been so jealous of one person. That is Nick. Nick, I hope you have an awesome time on Quantum again. Very jealous of you, buddy. Brogan, am I able to accept my final payment date? No, you're not. That's one thing you can't do. Jordan G, what's going on? Welcome. Uh, Matt, if you go buy yourself in a suite, you get five or six days credit. If you go buy yourself in a suite, and obviously you book under the uh, double points promo, you would get uh, six points per night because ordinarily you would get three for being in a suite by yourself. Um, but under the double points, you get six per night. That's a lot right there. So 
Scott J says, at least Alf and Teddy are back on the shelf. Something positive for 2021. Uh, Sari says, my Quantum Blast cruise got canceled. Read your blog over this cancellation. Do you know if lift and shift can be used out of an ovation itinerary instead? Um, I know that there is lift and shift available, Sari, but I believe it's pretty restrictive. Like, there's only a one week. I think it's only for Alaska. Um, so, uh, there, you can, but you have to read the fine print on that one because it does vary, quite frankly. So, but there is an option for that. Uh, Mark Hamill, super news about stacking FCC. Yes, if you guys didn't see yet, earlier today at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, we first reported that you can now combine, stack, use more than one FCC at a time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's finally happened. You can now combine, use, share FCCs as long as you're in the reservation. So if your wife has way more than you or your, your kids do or don't or whatever, anyway, you can share the balances on the reservation. You can stack two, three, eight FCCs. No problem. Uh, it's a long time coming. I am a little surprised it took this long, but I'm happy they did it. I think it's a major win uh, for everyone involved. I didn't know why they took so long to change that rule, but I think it is absolutely a major, major benefit for us all. And I love that they're making that change right there. So, uh, Bob Bullard from New York. Hello. Axel, are they extending the double points into 22? Right now, it goes through the end of March 2022. I have not seen any update. I don't know if they'll extend it again. We'll have to wait and see on that. So, uh, James Sablin says, what's the best ship I've been on? Oh, I love Harmony of the Seas. That's my favorite ship, quite frankly. I mean, they're all great. Don't take that as like, oh, Matt liked Harmony. Thus, I should not go on Symphony. Far from it. They're all great ships. There is not one ship in the fleet I don't recommend. Love it. Hmm. All right, Ronan says, what are some things that aren't worth doing an Anthem? That's hopefully what I'm going. I got it. I I wrote a blog post about this, Ronan, actually. I did a blog post uh, a couple weeks ago about the top, I think it were like eight things or so, maybe 10, I don't remember. Uh, top things that I've done on a roller coming cruise I'll never do again. And one of them was on Anthem of the Season. That was the uh, Ripcord by iFly. And I can already hear Becky Menken snickering all the way from Snow Washington. Um, at herself because she knows the story. But anyway, uh, I did not enjoy that. That was a, uh, <laughs> that's, that's when I learned my limitations, uh, uh, my own personal limitations. So there you go. There's one. Um, Sylvia, does the FCC stacking apply in Australia as well? Yes, there's no country restrictions. You are good to go. Jay Blackmore, what ship would you recommend for someone living in the UK? And if we have to fly, what ship would you suggest out of all the classes? Boy, again, there's not a ship I don't recommend or anything like that. Um, obviously if you live in the UK, if there's a ship that sails out of the UK, like maybe Anthem of the Seas or sometimes Independence of the Seas, why not pick that, right? There's something to be said about not having to fly, but I also know that in the UK, you guys have a terrible trans, like it takes forever to go like the same distance it would take here in the U S anyway, what I'm trying to say is you guys fly within the UK anyway, a lot more. Um, and regardless, um, if that is the case, you know, you got a lot of great choices in Europe, but uh, if you can drive to Southampton, I would say go out of Southampton and take a cruise out of there. Otherwise, you've got so many great choices. I mean, some of the newer ships, bigger ships are down in the Med, cruising out of Barcelona. Those are not bad choices as well. Uh, Steve Cohen, what's up, dude? I've had four cruises canceled this year. Welcome to the club, buddy. It's not a good club, but welcome to the club. John Mastany, do you think Royal Caribbean would cruise out of L.A. in the next couple of years? There was a lot of talk, John, about that. Um, prior to the cruise shut industry shutdown, there were rumors. There was actually at one point, John, the port of Los Angeles website, the schedule had Voyager of the seas listed with multiple stops. And everyone was thinking, this is it. This is it. It's happening. And, uh, so far another, Hey, chippy 900. Thank you for subscribing. Um, and Zanim, thank you for subscribing. Uh, but that hasn't obviously come to fruition yet. I think of their due to have a ship come out of the West Coast, but it's anybody's guess when that'll be, quite frankly. So, um, Becky Mankin, I think you're going through a tunnel. We can't see your comments. Don Tran, when do you think cruises in Alaska will start? Uh, I have no idea, buddy. There's no telling. There's so many issues there. I wrote a blog post about this last week, Don, about will there be cruises in Alaska in 21, and it's, just, it's a very complicated issue, unfortunately. So... Uh, Nick says, I know double points are extended to March 2022, but when cruises have to book by, uh, I believe you have to book it by the end of the year. 
I think. I'd have to double check on that, quite frankly. So, um, let's see. Mark Campbell, what is your best pick for the Barbados Cruise offerings they have listed? Boy, I mean, listen, the 14 night sailings look amazing. I mean, I booked the seven. I think any cruise that goes to Trinidad would be an amazing place to go to. I think when it comes to those, those new grandeur of the sea sailings, I think the nice thing about that is that you get so many new ports you can visit. And when you have the option to visit ports that you traditionally don't go on on a cruise, I think that is well worth it. Absolutely. Don says, want a cruise in December of 2021? How far in advance should we book it? Donald, I'll be honest with you. I always recommend booking as soon as you know you want to book it. Book it as early as you can. Prices only tend to go up over time. You can ask our friends here in chat, people who watch their prices after they book it, they, it's, prices start going up and up and up and up. So, uh, Leganas says, is Royal Caribbean making another ship? Oh, absolutely. They're uh, about to launch a new ship, Odyssey of the Seas. That'll be coming out some point in 2021. You've got uh, next year, a Wonder of the Seas will be coming out. And then they've got orders and who knows what will happen with those orders. But they do have orders for other ships as well, including more Oasis class ships. And believe it or not, a new class of ships called the Icon class. And again, some of these plans, who knows what's going to happen with uh, with everything with the shutdown and how long this goes on. But um, it's it's pretty exciting. So, yes, absolutely. I uh, got to have faith wants to know, why do I prefer Royal Caribbean other, over other cruise lines? It's a really good question. Um, part of uh, the main reason, the reason I tell people is I feel like Royal Caribbean is in that sweet spot of what you pay versus what you get. Other cruise lines may give you more, but you're also going to pay a lot more for them. And other cruise lines may be cheaper than Royal Caribbean, but they don't stack up with what Royal Caribbean offers there. And I love the value you get in uh, in, in a Royal Caribbean cruise. So for that reason, I, I prefer those. So, um, M. Rosser, can you tell me when the November 2022 schedules will be posted? Uh, don't ever apologize for asking me questions. That's fine. Um, there's no schedule yet. Royal Caribbean has not announced the next set of cruise deployments that will be um, that we'll have over there. So, it's kind of as soon as I do know. I will post it at royalcaribbeanblog.com. Uh, Beachy Mama came late. Love the lamp. Thank you. That's uh, Mr. James Gatton, who I believe is still in our chat, made it for me. He did it through a 3D printer. I don't know how 3D printers work. I'll be honest. I'm a tech guy. I've always been a tech guy. And I, I missed the memo or the training class or the webinar on how, what, how 3D printers work. But he made it. Actually, his buddy made it. But still, it's amazing. And, uh, yeah, looks awesome. So I'm, I'm very happy to have it there. I think it looks perfect uh, right over there. I moved a little to the side. Otherwise, my big fat head would be blocking it. Uh, Grethel says, I'm booked for Odyssey of the Seas July 4th out of Rome. What do you think the chances are that it's not going to get canceled? Gretel, it's a great question. Nobody knows the answer to your question. There is no answer. I hate to tell you that. You know, I, and I, I'm glad you brought this up because somebody posted after last week um, in the comments not during the session but afterwards somebody posted something i want to address somebody said matt just give us a number like make it up it doesn't matter just make it up why can't you just tell give us you know your prediction you know about cruises restarting when like answering gretel's question and it's it's a it's a good point except for one thing i'm not in the business of um giving you guys false hope one way or another. I don't want to deceive you. I don't want to give you guys false hope. Be like, oh yeah, Gretel, you've got a, you know, 80% chance or 100% chance or whatever. By giving anybody false hope, like, yes, it's going to happen. Or Gretel, you're in, you're in big trouble. I think I'm doing you guys a disservice. So yes, I could just make up a number. I could say, Gretel, you have a, you know, X percentage chance, but it's utterly meaningless. There is no information to base that off of. There is just simply... A guess. And in my opinion, guessing as to when cruises with any kind of accuracy will restart is the same level of chance of picking winning lottery numbers. Because I really believe that nobody knows. There isn't an answer. This isn't like a situation where, like, you know, I'm a bookie and you guys are placing bets on who's going to win the football game next week. And, and I have the inside info because I've been looking at the stats. I've, I, you know, I got a, an ear in the training room. That's not the case here. And that's the unfortunate truth about where we are. So I'm not going to tell you an answer because there is no answer. Anybody who tells you otherwise is just 
they're lying to you, quite frankly. There is no answer. Nobody knows. You may think very strongly something might happen there, but that's my opinion, and that's why I'm not, I don't, I don't give out predictions because I don't know, and I also don't want to mislead any of you guys. So we have some very nice super chats coming in. Russell Pendleton, thank you for the super chat, and Teresa McChain, thank you for the super chat as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. JC can fire it up. Yeah, listen, it's it's a good question. I, I'm I think it's worth addressing, and Gretel just brought it up again, and I wanted to make sure that it's crystal clear where I'm coming from, that I'm not being lazy, that I'm not trying to dodge the question. There just isn't an answer on it. So, yeah. Robert Jaworski says, sorry, running late. What were the winning lottery numbers? <laughs> Love it. Uh, Shane, Shans, uh, says sailing on Oasis in June. Do they have vegetarian options on the cruise? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, I don't think he's here, but I have a good friend of mine, Billy Hirsch, who runs cruisehabit.com and uh, he's a vegetarian. He loves kale. I'm making up the second part. Actually, I think he does like kale, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, he loves the vegetarian options on Royal Caribbean. They do a great job with it. Lots of choices. You won't have any issues there whatsoever. Um, let's see. Uh, Scott says, please tell me the ma evil magic eight ball was lost in the flood. Not to worry. It's not coming back. I, I, that will not make another appearance, uh, again, Dan Waterman from MEI travel says who doesn't love kale though. Ugh. <laughs> Dan is also actually, he's not just a vegetarian. He's also a vegan, but, uh, yeah, I know you love your kale and whatnot. So, um, I see once I've ever sailed from Singapore. I have not sailed from Singapore. I would love to. In fact, if I could get to Singapore right now, I would absolutely go to Singapore. I would say, honey, that's my wife I'm talking to, proverbially. Uh, I'm going to Singapore. I'm going there for like three months. I'll be back, you know, in the summer, and you'll see me then. Ciao. Uh, Michael H., if Congress were to resent this Jones Act, would Alaska cruise resume in 2021 sooner than later? Um, there would be one less major hurdle, Michael. It's still the CDC, still a major hurdle. Don't overlook that fact. So... The Jones Act would have removed Canada from the equation and being able to require cruise ships to stop there. But you still need the CDC to sign off on cruises being able to restart. So, um, yeah, it's still, it, it, it helps the scenario. It helps the odds, but it still isn't solved. It's then Alaska cruises are no different than cruises out of the Caribbean or New York or Galveston. So, um, next question. M1K3, which I think stands for Mike. Do you think Allure will get the rest of its enhances before its European 2022 season? Probably not. Um, the reason why I say that, and I don't, I really don't know, but um, at this point, refurbishments and enhancements, re enhancements, upgrades require money. And let's be frank, um, they don't have it. And long, this has been going on for a while now. And um, I, I really feel that whenever Royal Caribbean does resume sailings, it's going to be a while before them to really ramp up and get back to a point where financially, I think they're more on solid ground in terms of being able to afford to spend that money because they're right now in a very much a only spend what they need to spend mode. And obviously as cruises resume, they'll start to actually start getting revenue in and they can be a little more cavalier with what they're doing. But right now it's very conservative in that, in that respect. So, um, Sarah, 777, what's going on? 2021 Alaska August Ovation. Nice. I hope you get to go on your cruise. Uh, Tom Chapman says, what are the places on the Royal, Com Royal Monopoly board? Good question. Uh, there's a lot of places. Actually, if you go to royalcarbonblog.com, you can see photos of the board itself. But ship names. There are ships that are the names of the streets. So you have it by class of ships. And if I'm not mistaken, the Oasis class makes up the... I don't know if actually, I don't know if that's true. If it's the Oasis or Quantum class, this is like boardwalk and park place and whatnot. But... Yeah, you got a lot of choice. Actually, and I'm pretty sure on there they still have Majesty and Empress, so I guess it's out of date now. Um, what's the biggest cruise ship selling out of Singapore? It's the only cruise ship selling out of Singapore. That'd be Quantum of the Seas. Quantum of the Seas. Uh, Tony Diaz asking me to sing. You know, Tony? Boy, if I had a nickel every time you asked me to sing, buddy. Uh, Nathan says, interesting to see how Norwegian are running ads like crazy on TV and internet. Meanwhile, Royal Caribbean is offering double points. Yeah, you know, what's interesting, Nathan, is that Royal Caribbean and Norwegian have always had very much different marketing strategies. Sometimes they, they are the same, but you're absolutely right. There's very much a difference in, in their approach right there. I guess time will only tell which one was the better one, quite frankly. So, um, 
let's see. Jay Blackmore, have you ever sailed to or from the UK? No, but I am booked on Anthem of the Seas out of Southampton for this July. So let's hope I get the opportunity, Jay, to go on that cruise because that would be amazing. Daryl says, hello, Brad Pitt. Oh, you know, I get we get confused all the time, but I'm not Brad Pitt. I'm Matt. I know we look alike, but welcome, Daryl. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, says Ben, um, says, of course, Royal Caribbean has lost a lot of money, but are they in financial trouble? I mean, they've lost a lot of money. You're right. But I don't think they're in, in terms of the, you know, bankruptcy, which is really what you're, you're asking me. It hasn't really come up in any financial talkings that I've talked, I've seen. I mean, I think it's one of those things as we get closer, as we move through time, you know, different earnings reports, you'll, you'll, that'll come up more in the conversation, but, um, they have a lot of cash stacked up right now. The one thing that you might miss out on is yes, they've lost a lot of money but they have been stashing cash like crazy. They have tens of billions of dollars locked up right now um, in, in just loans and whatnot. And listen, you know, this, this is a profitable industry. Everybody knows that the banks know that as well. So, you know, obviously they're in this for the long haul, but they have a lot of cash to keep them going. How long? I don't know. No one really knows the answer to that. It's impossible to know. Maybe during the next earnings call, we might get a clearer picture on that, but, um, it's, they haven't just been sitting there resting on their laurels and like, you know, whatever money they had in the bank account as of March, 2020, they've taken out a lot of money, a lot of money. And they've you know, obviously made some, some, uh, cutbacks and they just sold Azamara cruise line for $201 million that happened last week as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Robert says today, the 26th is Australia day. Happy koala day. I will throw some lamb on the barbecue for me. Thank you, buddy. Happy Australia Day to you, all our Aussie friends. Catcher, what's the best way to get to Stewart, Alaska from Anchorage to take a southbound cruise? Airplane, I'm assuming. Is that what you're asking? You mean Seward, right? Not Stewart. Seward, Alaska. A flight, I'm guessing. That's probably your best. Or, eh, better yet, do a back to back cruise. Take the cruise that leaves out of Vancouver, ends in Seward, and then comes back. Um, Tony says, rumor is Matt is Brad Pitt's stunt double lo <laughs> during lovemaking. Oh, my goodness. Tony. <laughs> uh, love it. Love it. Good times, guys. Um, any update on Wonder of the Seas from Royal Caribbean? No, really nothing. It's still under construction. It's the best they got. But they they don't, Royal Caribbean really doesn't spend a whole lot of time talking or giving updates about cruise ships that are under construction. Part of the reason is they don't want you focused on there. They don't want you saying, boy, that looks nice. I'm going to wait. And book that cruise. They don't want you to do that. They want you to book a cruise now. Book a cruise tomorrow. And whenever Wonder of the Seas comes out, then book that. That's It's part of the strategy. It's it's actually, it may sound silly, but it's actually a very sound marketing strategy. You want your customers engaged with what's available now, not sitting on the sidelines, right? This is something that we see with Apple um, and, and even some video games as well, uh, you know, where people say, oh, I'm going to wait for the next gen. I'm going to wait for the next r release. And they end up not doing anything, but really what the companies want you to do is obviously book in between. So that's the reason why we don't get many updates on that. Uh, Cindy Rendon, I just did the lift the chip today. Do you think I can still get a travel agent's help? Yes, absolutely, Cindy. Um, you have, after you book a cruise, even on your own, you have 60 days from the booking to uh, transfer to a TA. So get an MEI travel agent to help you out, Cindy. Absolutely. There's like eight in chat right now. You got Jennifer, you got Beth, you got Rich, you got... Uh, um, Daniel. So, um, Kelly is here and we got, all, we got the whole crew here. Uh, let's see. Terry says, will Royal Caribbean ships ever stop with by Korea again? I think so, Terry. I think a lot of that has to do with just with, you know, again, in, in terms of Korea, you're talking about cruises out of China resuming. And when that occurs, obviously that'll bring that back. Cause obviously Korea has been a big thing, but like so many ports in the world, I think we're all waiting to see. Will T with the super chat. Holy moly. Thank you, Will T. Thanks for helping me keep the cruise dream alive. I hope they start again soon. Cheers, buddy. I agree with 100% Will T. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. And let us hope, guys, better times ahead with more cruises together. Because that sounds amazing. Uh, Jay, do you think they will sell Vision? I think all ships eventually will be sold. But I think you mean the short term. I mean, they've been... Royal has said they're only really going to be selling ships if it's opportunistically adva advantage, ad advantage, advantageous for them. And thus far, I've not gotten that sense that that's been the case. But 
Who knows? Who knows? Anything's possible. I, I would think we'd be naive to assume not, but certainly um, Royal Caribbean has been less aggressive than, say, Carnival, but Carnival Fleet was much bigger than Royal Caribbean, so it's hard to compare apples to apples, quite frankly. And don't forget, Royal Caribbean, and I say Royal Caribbean, now I'm talking about Royal Caribbean Group, just got rid of Azamara, so there goes three ships right there. So you always have to remember also that you're talking about the bigger scale. Like It's not just Royal Caribbean International, it's their sister brands as well. Uh, Kaywana wants to know how modern is Grandeur? It's a good ship. It's not the newest ship in the fleet by any means. Um, you know, it's a 20 some odd year old ship, but it's a great ship. I mean, I, I'm booked on her. The, the question really, Kaywana, that you want to ask is not how modern. That's irrelevant because you're just asking what's the age of the ship. What you're really asking is, or what you should be asking yourself is, what does the ship have on board? What does it not have on board? And is that important to you? Like, as an example, Grandeur doesn't have a water slides. Does that matter to you? Probably, maybe. You're probably saying like, eh, I'd like it, Matt, but not a big deal. Um, it doesn't have a full Broadway show. It doesn't have, um, you know, a flow rider surf simulator. It doesn't have bumper cars. It doesn't have a real promenade. But it does have a beautiful centrum area. Great pool deck, especially restaurants. Not as many as Oasis class ships, but still, you know, uh, enough to keep you busy over there. And of course, Grandeur goes to a lot more ports. So it's all a great ship. Kenny Gay with a super chat coming in. What was the last ship to get amped before lockdown? Was it Navigator? Uh, no, actually. I'll, all right, I know the answer, but chat, do you know the answer to Kenny's question? What was the last ship to get fully amplified? Not like what Allure and Explorer got. Does anyone know? The oh, train plays already got it. Look at that. This chat, guys, you guys know your stuff. Freedom of the Seas. Yeah, Freedom got it. Um, it came out, Kenny, like they had one sailing, literally one, and that was it. And then that was, then they shut everything down. So, uh, yeah, she got hers in early 2020, January. But, uh, shout out to train plays for getting that one quickly. And of course, Tim knew it and, uh, powerful, actually powerful. They got it wrong. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Wendy got it. So there you go. Good question. Um, Jay says, I sure hope that Vision doesn't get sold. I love it. It brings back the nostalgia of being a kid on a Royal Caribbean ship. Yeah, a lot of people, everyone's got their favorite ships. So I don't think you're wrong by any means for, for thinking along those lines. And I don't certainly don't want any of my favorite ships to go away. So and then, inevitably they'll all be sold, but hopefully not before, not, not before it's time, you know? So, uh, not a real person. You're supposed to be on the second sailing. Ugh, talk about bad luck, right? Uh, what ship will take over Majesty and Empress itineraries? Probably none. Not none anytime soon. You know, Empress was going in some really interesting itineraries, like to, you know, triple overnights in Bermuda and down the St. Lawrence River in Canada. I don't think that's going to happen. And Majesty was last supposed to be out of New Orleans. I don't see that being replaced anytime soon. I think they're not going to have direct replacements. I mean, in, in a sense, from a uh, birth standpoint, um, Odyssey of the Seas is taking over, right? It's and by berths we're talking about, you know, beds on ships, people, sp spots on cruise ships you can book, and essentially you're taking the capacity of those two ships, Majesty and Empress, and you've got Odyssey of the Seas. It's pretty much a wash in that regard, more or less. So, uh, probably female. Now is the perfect time to refurbish the ships, especially since when it opens, we'll all sail and be crazy to stop at that point to refurbish. That would be true if they had the money for it. You're absolutely right. I mean, that would be a great time because there's downtime. It's like, remember when um, when a lot of a, a lot of countries went on lockdown? And a lot of, I think one of the most ob ob astute observations was, I hope like everybody, like they're fixing all the potholes on the highways right now because nobody's driving and now's the perfect opportunity. The problem, powerful female, is Royal Caribbean has no money. They can't spend that money. It's, it's It would be frivolous of them to do so. So you're not wrong in the in the sense that it's good it's good timing otherwise, but unfortunately, financially, it doesn't make any sense. So, uh, Queen wants to know if you didn't sail row, what line would you choose to sail and why? Um, that's a good question. I'd love to try. I'd love to try celebrity cruises at some point. Um, I used to sail on before row. I used to sail on Disney Cruise Line, but their prices are ridiculous. I don't think I can afford them anymore. Um, I did Norwegian once, didn't love it. Then it was an older ship. I'd probably, I'd love to try like maybe one of their newer ships, like the Breakaway or the Bliss, just to say I've tried it. Um, 
But I think celebrity is where I would naturally want to gravitate towards. And listen, at the end of the day, guys, a brand new cruise ship, like a new, new out of the dry, like out of the shipyard, almost any cruise line is, is worth doing. So, yeah. Tim Gallery, is this the longest you've gone without a cruise since you started the blog? Uh, no, actually. Um, I started the blog in 2010. And I, in the first couple of years of the blog, I only went on a cruise like once a year. It wasn't until about 2012 or so, maybe 13, I went on two cruises in the same year. Two. I thought that was big living right there. I was like, I, I you know that song? Big Pimpin' NYC. It's, I, that was, that was not the tune, but the, the, uh, what's his name? Oh my goodness. Um, Nelly, uh, Big Pimpin'. That, I thought that was me because I went on two cruises in one year. And, um, no, I was, <laughs> so anyway, Tim, I am sure I've gone like, you know, in terms of days more than a year, um, but we're getting close to it. And certainly Tim, this is the longest I've gone without a cruise in well over, you know, what, what years is 21, four or five years, I would say at least not that anyone's any sympathy for me, but you know, it's all relative. Is it Jay Z? I thought it was it was Nelly. Is it Jay Z? No, no. Who sings? It is Jay Z. Why do I think it was Nelly? Wow. All right, no, it's definitely Jay Z. Oh, thank you. Um, Daniel. Most most amount of cruises you've been on within one year. Uh, it would have been twenty nineteen. Man, I used to know the number. I forgot the count, actually. Um, it was over 10. I think it was around 12 or 14 or so. Um, and I thought in 2020 I would, excuse me, easily beat that. And that was not the case, unfortunately. So, Did anything happen? Did I miss anything behind me? Didn't see it. Steve Gomes, does this mean you're going to try Mart Carnival Mardi Gras? Let me put it this way, Steve. If Royal Caribbean was not operating and Carnival Mardi Gras was the only cruise ship operating right now, I would absolutely go on the Carnival Mardi Gras. Yeah. But I'm still holding out for Royal Caribbean. Um, do you think that cruises will require vaccination? Boy, that is the big question right now. And it is a combination health question as much as it is a business question. And I don't know how they're going to go with it because there are, there are issues with either option. Requiring it means you're severely limiting your clientele base. Also, you, you might be even putting off others from potentially coming back from it. On the other hand, you have, of course, the health considerations. And if you have a fully vaccinated you know, crew and guest clientele, there's a lot less risk involved or potential risk, I should say. Nothing's ever, there's no guarantees in life, right? Um, Maybe ports will require it, and then it'll be out of the cruise line's hands anyway. You know, like, listen, we got to go to the Bahamas, and they require it, so don't blame the messenger. I don't know. Um, I, I really, I, I don't know what they're, I thought at first, like, when it first got brought up, will cruise lines require vaccinations? I thought there's no way they'll require it. And now I'm thinking maybe they will, but even then, the logistics of it, how to prove it. I know there's, you know, the the, the vaccine passports, things of that nature. Who knows? Um, that idea is not the, the idea of requiring vaccinations for cruises is not limited to just cruises. Um, the whole travel sector is looking at this idea from airlines to hotels, resorts. Um, this is something that very few companies, I remember if I'm not mistaken, Qantas airlines first said they were going to require it. And then their CEO walked it back and they were like, eh, maybe we'll require it. So We'll have to see. Um, what country is on my bucket list? Boy, that's a great question. Uh, I th I mean, bucket list like I would. I mean, Australia. I I'd be I'd be lying if it wasn't Australia. I mean, Europe. I've always wanted to go to as well. But you know, to me, bucket list is like it, it's the top places you'd want to visit, and certainly Australia because it seems so far and out of reach for me. I hate flying. It's a very long flight. I just don't see myself going there anytime soon. That, to me, is really towards the top right there. Not to say that I absolutely would love to take a cruise, you know, visit Norway, uh, England, France, Italy, um, a variety of other countries as well. 
So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Donna, there was no health passport when we went through SARS. I imagine that SARS was a lot different than COVID-19. I think you'd have to admit that the global impact has been just a wee bit bigger. It's not apples to apples by any means. And I don't want to get into debate over the whole pandemic. It's just it's a fair question to ask and wanted to give my best answer. Susan says, I've been cruising since the love boat was on TV. Been on many lines of roller coaster. It's my favorite, especially the Oasis Clash Ships. Welcome, Susan. I love the Oasis Clash Ships. It's my wife's favorite as well. You can't go wrong. There's just so much great choice on there. Love it. Uh, Derek, do you think roller coaster was selling by May? No one knows. I don't know either, either, Derek. Anything's possible. I think you'd be remiss if you didn't uh, admit that, but you'd also have to admit no one really knows. It's just it's still too early to know the answer to that. Uh, let's see. Is your group cruise canceled? It is not. It is not, my friend. With our group cruise, until Rel cancels it, it's game on. Game on. Um, let's see. It's time for another question or two, guys. I'm trying to get some other questions we haven't answered yet. Uh, Big Toucan, should I use a travel agent for a party of 10, even if I really enjoy planning it myself? Will it cost less, and is it worth it? You should absolutely, positively use a travel agent, especially with a group. You don't want to be the person who's chasing down payments, who's, when when Cousin Bruce has, has got a question for you, you've got to figure out the issues. Trust me, dude. You can plan out the fun stuff. Plan out the activities, the excursions you're going to do. Plan the fun stuff. But the logistics, like, where's Uncle Bob's money? Why hasn't Cousin Tony paid off yet? And, you know, uh, Aunt Cheryl's got a question about which room to book. Let the travel agent deal with it. That's their problem. 100%. Use a travel agent. You'll thank me later. Trust me. You can still plan out the fun stuff, dude, which is like, you know, where you're going to eat, different restaurants, shore excursions, all the good stuff, not the boring stuff. Let, let, let Kelly Hardy from MEI Travel deal with the boring stuff. Right, Kelly? She's like, yes. <laughs> Paul Sumbrell, who's your favorite character from The Love Boat? I have to admit, The Love Boat was before my time. I never, I never saw the love boat. I'm sorry. I know the love boat. No, I'm sorry. It was before my time. I know of it, but I, I guess I go with the guy, the Fonz bartender. Hey, that guy, whoever that guy was. I don't think anyone says Captain Steubing, right? Like, why would you pick the cap? Like, this is the captain, I guess. But you got to pick the the bartender, dude. Hey, I don't think he says E. I think that's that's literally Fonz, but you know what I mean. I never saw the love boat. It was before my time. It came out in the 70s. I was not alive then. The bartender was Isaac. There you go. Thank you, Wolf. Uh, David says, do I get my points for my wife if she's on my app booking? No. Um, just like airlines, David, you only get points for the cruises that you take. And by the way, going back to the question about should they use a travel agent or not, um, uh, Kelly says, I love the boring stuff. Um, you can actually sometimes save money, especially as the tour leader. And again, a travel agent can work with you on that and give you the idea of exactly what you need to do there. So, uh, Bergen, if the Norway group cruise gets canceled, will you lift and shift to the 22? I will not. Um, I'm just going to play it by ear. I, I'm not, in, in general, when it comes to group cruises, I am not, just like the 2021 that got canceled, um, I'm not going to just push it back a year. We'll figure out new group cruises, but I'm not going to make decisions about future group cruises until we get a better answer, better picture of where cruising is going to resume when it's going to resume where it's going to resume and then pick a sailing from that because i just you know we already have two cruises that are on the books now that who knows what will happen so i want to make very certain that we pick a new group cruise that's going to be one that i can say guys this one is definitely going to sail unless there's a new pandemic or something like that but you know what i mean as opposed to like maybe it'll sail uh tom how does passing points of children work good question tom so um it let's say your, your kids, uh, until they're 18, they inherit your status. They don't get your points, Tom. But if you're Diamond members already and you have your first child, bam, your child is Diamond. If you go on, you have a kid and you go on 20 cruises without them, as long as they're under 18, they get credit for whatever status you get in Crown and Anchor Society and they, they match your status. Now, their points are still back at zero in this example, but they will always have that status. When they turn 18 and they become an adult, they retain their status, but they'll still accrue points back at zero. Does that make sense? So they won't be able to move up 
by themselves without you um, until they cruise enough to match the points that you had. If that makes sense. Uh, Big Toucan, how do I find the right travel agent? I think it's really referrals, uh, word of mouth, somebody who has used one and really likes it. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that we have a sponsor here at royalcaribbeanblog.com, MEI Travel. I love them. They're a sponsor, but I've been using them even before they were a sponsor. And uh, yeah, so there you go. But you know, obviously, I would say that in general, when it comes to a travel agent, you know, find someone who's, who's got a good one, ask them for their reference and go from there. So, uh, Coast Guard vet is Royal Caribbean. Sorry, I missed your question. Let me scroll back up. Is Royal Caribbean on schedule with beginning the new port terminal to Galveston? As far as we know, yes, actually. Royal Caribbean has sworn up and down that um, they, they've told the port of Galveston. So this is like secondhand information. But the port of Galveston says that Royal Caribbean told them they have the money allocated to begin construction in April of this year. We'll see it when they start bringing the backhoe in there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, last question is from Caitlin Spearman because it's a good question. I want to make sure we hit it. What does lift and shift mean? Lift and shift is the option you have to basically take your existing cruise and defer it a year plus or minus four weeks um, to a very similar sailing um, the next year. So the idea is like you have spring break booked. You know you want to go on spring break next year, right? So you lift and shift it. And you might say, well, why don't I just cancel and rebook it now? What's the, what's the point, right? The point is you get to price protect the price you paid for this year for next year. So when the price is more next year, you get to you get to uh, keep the old price, which is really nice. It's been a very, very lucrative option for guests. So, all right, guys. Really appreciate you all hanging up out here. I want to say a big thank you to our super chatters today. Thank you, Kenny K. Thank you, Will T. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Michael Bush. And thank you, Ed Spies. Guys, thank you for the super chats. Very, very kind of you. Really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Times are tough, and I appreciate you guys stepping up. So thank you guys so much. Thank you to everybody for joining us here on YouTube Live. Hope you had enjoyed it as much as I did. We're live every Monday, and when we're not live, we're over at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Tomorrow, we have a brand new YouTube video to share, and tomorrow, guys, it's a it's a juicy one. It's got, uh, it, it, there's a prediction in there. Not mine, but there's a prediction. What could it be? And what are my thoughts on it? Check out our YouTube video tomorrow coming out there. So enjoy that. Guys, have a great rest of your week. Stay safe out there. Do something fun. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Bye, everybody.